and I of Believe, and you're here in the office of the Always Believe House, and today we're going to continue learning about domain and range, and you're going to learn two words that you didn't in junior high. You're going to learn about discrete functions and continuous functions. Ho, 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 ho. So we are about to have a blast. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. Okay, let me start recording, because if I don't, I do all this and it doesn't make a difference. We are recording a magical whiteboard now appears in my office. Okay, so let's go through and take these notes. Remember, a function is a relation with the x and y, and your x is your domain, and your range is your y. And remember, they're alphabetical order. X comma Y, domain comma range. They're both alphabetical order. So the X values would be your domain, and the range values would be your Y values, right? So the domain right here would be 3 comma 5 comma negative 2 comma 3. Those are my X's. And my Y's would be 4 comma 7 comma negative 7 comma 1. Okay, notice that the x's right here are repeating, aren't they? Since they are, it would not be a function, are they? Let's go to the next one. Okay, so all we're doing here is identifying the domain and range. So your x values are your domain, your y values are your range. So my domain would be negative 2, negative 1, and 0, and my range would be 4, 7, 11. Oh, 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 that would be a function because the x's are not repeating. Look at the mapping. The X is your domain. The range is your Y. Remember, it's always alphabetical. My domain values would be negative 3, 0, 1, and 6. And my range values would just be 4 and 10, wouldn't they? This also would be a function because each domain gets a unique answer. Oh, oh, oh the X's are not repeating. So the domain is a set of all X or independent values of relation it's all of your x, all of your input values. I, I like input output here. So the domain is the number you put into the function. The range is a set of all y about y or independent values for a relation or function. All of your output values. Okay. So your domain is your input. Your range is your output. Okay. Discrete is a set of whole numbers. It's countable. Continuous is a set of, uh, I guess, real numbers. This would have fractions and decimals in it, okay? Now then, what I'm about to do here is I'm about to illustrate this. Let's draw an X, Y axis, and let's put tickets and money. And let's say you sell a ticket for five bucks. You sell one ticket, you have five dollars. You sell two tickets, you have ten. 3 tickets, 15, 4 tickets, 20, 5 tickets, 25. Notice you'll never have 12 bucks in this situation, will you? You'll only have multiples of 5. You're only getting whole number values for those tickets. You can't sell one and a half tickets. So that would be a discrete function. A continuous function is like the gasoline in your car. So let's put uh, gas up here and let's put miles. What happens to you, the gas in your car as you drive, it goes down with you. In this instance, you would have 20 gallons. You have 19.7 gallons, 19.2 gallons. It would be continuously draining with it. And it would include all real numbers on that graph. It wouldn't go from 20 gallons into 19 gallons, into 18 gallons. That is continuous. So a discrete function is when you're getting whole number of values and you would not connect the dots on a graph. A continuous function it is what's gradually going down or gradually going up, okay? We'll continue that later in this lesson. Now then, turn the page! Okay, let's go to the next page. Remember, your input is your, do is your x, your output is your y, right? So the domain would be the input, which would be 0, 1, 2, and 3. And your range would be 12, 8, 4, and 0, okay? Now then, it says, please list the numbers from latest to greatest. Notice my domain is correctly, but your range, and technically you put these in braces, your range should be 0, 4, 8, and 12. You technically put your domain and range from least to greatest, okay? This would be a discrete function because it only can, it, oh, you don't know if it has decimal values. Is this a function? Yes. 
Why or why not? The X's do not repeat. If you wrote down no, you would write down the X's do repeat, right? Pretty simple stuff. Review from last year, the discrete and continuous is the only thing new. Remember, if it's just a table of values, you're going to assume it's discrete because you don't know if you're getting the decimal values. Let's go to the next problem. And hopefully this clears up. Okay. The domain, remember, will be your X, your range is your Y, and it's the same as the input and the output, right? Okay. And you want to put your range in order, right? So my smallest range would be negative 3, and then I would go to 2. But notice I have a whole bunch of 2s, don't I? But I'm only going to write it down once. And then my next smallest number would be 3, and then 5, right? So I have negative 3, 2, 3, and 5. That is my domain. My range is going to be, let's get the smallest number. So it's going to go to 4, to 6, to 7, and to 10, right? So you're just writing these down in order. So I had to look through to get them in order. The X's repeated, didn't they? These 2's repeated, right? This would be discrete because you don't know if it has the decimal values or not. Okay, you really have to have a word problem to figure out if it's discrete or continuous. Is this a function? No, because the X's repeat, right? So your reason will be the X's repeat or the X's do not repeat. If the X's repeat, it's not a function. If the X's do not repeat, it is a function. Okay, let's go to the next one, the domain. Remember, you're going to put these in order, least to greatest, 0, 1, 2, 3. If the domain repeats, you only put that domain once. Your range is going to be, put them in order, negative 2, 1, 2, and 4, right? Now then, this 0 goes to the negative 2 and the 1, doesn't it? So if I put an order pair, 0 would have negative 2 and 0 would have 1, wouldn't it? Okay, this would not be a function, would it? Okay, it is discrete. Remember, you're really going to have to have a verbal description to figure out if it's continuous. Like the miles, the gallons, in, the amount of gasoline in your car, the amount of money you're making if you're getting paid by dollar and you get paid for like a, an hour and a half, you're constantly making the money, okay? Is this a function? No. And remember, you're going to put X's repeat or X's do not repeat. In this problem, the X's repeat, right? So it's not a function. Oh, oh, oh what a blast. Oh. Okay, and let's go to the next. Let's go to the bottom right here. Let's write down our domain. Notice this has decimal values, right? So we're going to assume all real numbers in this. So let's write down our domain. You put it in braces, and we're going to put smallest to big. So 3 and 5 tenths, 4 and 32 hundredths, 4 and 4 tenths, and 36. That would be our domain. Our range, put them small to large. So one tenth would be the smallest, then one, then eight, and then 16 and 5 tenths. So you're putting these in order from largest to smallest, right? Notice none of these X's repeat. You're going to assume this is continuous because it has decimal values, okay? Is this a function? Yes. And you would write down X's do not repeat. Ho, 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 ho. Let's go to the next one. Turn the page! Ho, ho, ho. Okay, now then, let's write out all the coordinates here, okay? So I'm going to just bubble over them again, and I'm going to go left to right and write down our order pairs. Notice right here, a vertical line, and let me draw it through here. This vertical line would go through those two points, wouldn't it? So this is not going to end up being a function. So let's write down all the order pairs. Let's go left to right. So we would have, oh, negative 4, 2. Then we would have negative 2 comma 2, and then we would have negative 1 comma 4, and then we would have 1 comma 1, then we would have 1 comma 3, notice the 1 repeats, doesn't it? And then we would have 2 comma negative 3. Okay, so our domain, put a brace, and let's go through, notice they're in order, I have them down in order, right? So negative 4, negative 2, negative 1, only put the 1 once, and then 2, right? But this won't be a function because the 1 repeats. The range is going to be my y's. Only put the 2 down once, or let's put them in order from smallest to largest. So the negative 3 would go first, and then my 1, 
And then my two, I'm only going to write down one, two, and then three, then four, right? So that's my domain and my range. Put them smallest to largest. Don't write down repeating values. Discrete or continuous. Notice the dots are not con connected. It's discrete. Is it a function? No. The x's repeat. You could actually put the one repeats, right? The domain of one repeats if you wanted to. Just write x's repeat or x's don't, okay? So the big deal you're learning right now is discrete and continuous. Discrete does not connect, continuous does. You're about to get good examples of this in the graphs. So notice that discrete, like I talked about the tickets, right? It's not going to connect. And all the ones to the right, like cost and pounds, you're going to pay for 1.2 pounds, aren't you? That would be continuous. Usually most of your GX plus S problems are continuous, most of them, okay? But like if you're selling tickets, okay, that won't be continuous, it would be discrete. And you can see a really good example of the discrete continuous. Discrete would just be dots and continuous would be a constant graph, okay? What a blast. I'm gonna stop recording, okay, in the meeting so it can record it. Oh, 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 remember, you are amazing. You are created to do wonderful things. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. You learned about domain and range today and what makes a discrete continuous function. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and you are awesome.